Welcome back. Most people would consider running a marathon at the peak of their fitness, but not Ross Cook. The British endurance athlete, nicknamed the hardest geezer, completed a 9,941-mile run along the entire length of Africa on Sunday. It's taken him nearly a year to do it, and he's raised over £870,000 for charity during the epic challenge. Well, I'm glad to say the hardest geezer joins me now live in the studio. Hi. Hi, so Hi, good everyone. to see you. I mean, it, it's taken you a year to get to our studio. That's how long the, the run was. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, no, I'm buzzing <laughs> to be back. Um, just, yeah, loving being back in the UK. And in that time, I mean, did you, when you went out, was your beard this long? Or? It wasn't, no, the, the barnet is a bit of a mess right now. Do you need to, I'm just looking at myself there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to get a haircut imminently, I think. Bad. I mean, just just tell us first of all. I mean, this isn't the first time you've done something sort of like this. Yeah. You, you, you know, why did you decide to do it? I mean, you, you did it basically for charity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, a, a big reason is the, is the charity. We've obviously raised 170 grand for charity now, which is uh, which is wicked. Um, but also, you know, I just want to. When I'm an old man, I want to be able to look back and say I had a tear up and that I made the most of this life and want to have stories for the grandkids and all this kind of stuff. So just, you know, trying to get about it as much as possible, really. OK, so tell us where you started and where you ended up and what was going through your mind when you were doing this. <laughs> so I started at the most southern tip of the continent in South Africa, in Cape or Gullis. Ended up in Tunisia, the most northern tip of Africa, in uh, Ras Angela, I believe it's called. And, yeah, I mean, that we had so many challenges, hurdles to overcome, you know, Congo rainforest, Sahara desert, loads of countries, 16 countries. So there was always something to be thinking about or a problem to solve. So I was mostly thinking about that a lot. Um, but, you know, I was on long runs every day. So I'd be thinking about all sorts, to be honest. Mostly on your own? Yeah, yeah, pretty much like 99.9% .9 of it was on my own, yeah. Yeah, and, I, you know, it wasn't all without its... You talked about some of the challenges, but we're talking mm. about... Robbery as well, yeah. a visa issue. Yeah, Talk yeah. us through that. Uh, yeah, so I was, we were robbed at gunpoint in Angola. Um, we've, we had a few different visa issues, lost passports and um, couldn't get into Algeria, it was, but we managed to get that solved in the end. We've, we put a thing out on social media and loads of people came to help us and then it ended up the president of Algeria sorted us out a visa, which was incredible. And we had a, such a great time in Algeria as well. Um, so, yeah, like, it was... <laughs> so much happened, I can't lie, it was crazy. I mean, it kind of slightly reminds me of sort of Forrest Gump, where yeah, you said, yeah. you know, for 365 days, I just I just ran. Yeah. Were you just running the, the entirety of the time? Or were you having, were you were obviously having moments to, to sleep and eat as well. Yeah, yeah, no, so I'd, um, I ran on average 46 kilometres a day um, throughout the whole year. So, so basically a marathon every day. Yeah, slightly more than a marathon a day. Um, but then, you know, in between that, we, we, we were putting loads of, we were making like content and stuff. So we were doing stuff on social media and making YouTube videos and documentary and like had a team. So there's loads going on, um, but yeah. Any moments of, of sort of regret where you sort of midway, you thought, what, what am I doing? And am I going to finish this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was, I think I was, at, I was speaking to the guys at the running chat earlier and I was like, actually for like the, the last seven months were so brutal, I was like, in my head, it, I, was, I was finding it hard to conceive of this thing ever ending. I was just, wait, you know, wake up, run, eat, sleep, run. And, you know, every now and again, the country would change. We're like, oh, now I'm in the desert. But it kind of felt like this elusive thing. It was on the road for so long that this finish line was just like some mystical object that I was never going to get my hands on. But time's relentless and, you know, here we are. And sort of what aspect or part of the rain, uh, uh, the run, did you sort of really enjoy and find really kind of, you know... So much, you know, like, there, there was... I think one of the best parts was the amount of people that we met that were just so kind to us, um, sh like, sharing those cultures, learning about all these different parts of Africa that, like, not many people will really ever go to um, was really cool. And, you know, every country we went to, there was people that would, you know, either take us into their houses or feed us or help us out with X, Y, Z things that we had going on, which was like really incredible um, experience to be able to like see that kind of humanity everywhere. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. 
And what about the impact on your body? Uh, did you have a, a doctor with you uh, or, or, you know, were you sort of doing anything to sort of repair your body every day? Because it is, as you say, just a little over a, a marathon, do you? Yeah. Um, nah, no doctor. Uh, my body is... My body... I've had three days of not running now, so my body feels quite all right. But that for the whole year, my body's been messed up. Um, had injury, every injury you can imagine. Uh, yeah, it was really brutal. I, like, it feels so weird now because my leg's kind of starting to feel a bit normal again and I, I couldn't remember what that felt like. What, what was it feeling like? Was Just it... everything was so sore, the muscles are so tight, everything's really fatigued. Like, my hip flexors have been absolutely burnt to pieces for, for ages. You know, like, calf, my, every, like, every muscle in my leg, my back's been... I injured my back on, like, two, day 200, never really recovered. So, yeah, it was painful, can't I? Very painful. And what about your, your family, your friends, your girlfriend? Yeah. I, I, you know, when you were robbed, were, were they sort of saying to you, you know what, just come home? <laughs> <laughs> I, they, they don't even say stuff like that to me anymore because they just know it's not happening. Like, um, my, yeah, my girlfriend, we didn't, I didn't see her for 14 months, but, you know, she's sat out there now and uh, she's been super supportive the whole time. Everyone has. Like, my friends and family, we saw them at the finish line and we had, like, a nice meal together the other night and I'll go back and see them in a couple of days. So... Yeah, no, like, it's, it's great, yeah. There were a, a bunch of supporters, actually, close yeah. to the finish line. They, they ran that last bit with you, including yeah. our, our sports uh, uh, Rob, yeah, Rob yeah. Harris. Yeah, I'm just going to show, show that picture of Rob trying to interview you at, as you, as you uh, ran. Uh, yeah, we could see Look you there with the go. bike. <laughs> what a man. Um, we, we sort of, you suddenly got there and all these people are there, including the press. Yeah. Did you realise that there was this momentum no, building? No, not a clue. Like, I couldn't believe it when I rolled up there. So many people. Um, yeah, cameras and loads of people asking me questions. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, and you, like uh, you said, you, you did this for, for charity. What charity can people still donate? Yes, so we're trying to get it to a million. We're nearly there. Um, raising money for the running charity, which we try and engage young people in sport, um, especially running. We work, we work here in the UK. And then I'm also raising money for Sandblast, which do work in one of the biggest refugee camps in Africa. They deliver uh, educational and cultural programs there. And what's next for you? I've got 20 <sighs> seconds. <laughs> um, probably some ice cream. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll sit down, relax, and then we might have another challenge at some you point. You actually had some strawberry daiquiris that night. Yeah, had a, had a strawberry daiquiri, had like four beers, <laughs> sent me a bit over the edge. But yeah, no, we're, we're all good now, yeah. Oh, well, Ross, we're, we're really grateful uh, that you've come a and shared your story Thanks here with us after me. a really long run. Thank you so much. Wicked.